Hello, and today we're going to discuss Aristotle's theory of causation. His theory of causation is a posteriori argument because it is based on the world around us, the, observation, the observations made from the world around us, not on any previous knowledge. Firstly, we need to define two things, a form and a matter. A form for Aristotle is different to what a form is for Plato. A form for Aristotle is a thing's specific character. It is its form, it is its shape. And a matter is simply the material something is made out. So the matter of something for Aristotle is what it is made out, the material. So he said to explain something fully, okay, to explain something fully, there are four causes we have to look at. So if we take a simple magazine like this, and we want to explain this magazine. How would we explain this magazine? Well, the first cause, he said, is the material cause. The material cause is what the item is made of. This is made from glossy paper and ink, and maybe it's laminated a little bit. So that is the material cause of this magazine. The second cause is the efficient cause. It is the agent or producer that has made it. So there will be... Um, writers who have put this together, producers, um, advertisers, all of these people are the agents who made this, who made this magazine. They would be the efficient cause of this magazine. The third cause is the formal cause. This is the shape and the form the object is in. This magazine is in a thin cuboid shape. That's the form of it. It's a form with a cover and a and a back and pages in between it. And finally, the fourth cause is the final cause, which is the purpose it's made for. In this magazine's case, the magazine is made um, to entertain, to educate people, or you know what magazines are made for, to advertise, to get things selling. So to explain something fully, we need to look at these four causes. Four causes, the material cause, the formal cause, the efficient cause, the final cause. The material and the efficient cause are telling you what a, uh, what a product is like in a given moment. So the matter and the agent that's produced it will tell you what it's like at that moment. At that moment we know that it is made out of paper and it is made by a producer. So we know at that moment what it's like. Whereas the formal and the final cause will tell about matter taking and losing its form. So the purpose, the final cause, will tell us about how this actually came to be what it is. Because of its purpose to entertain. It's been made this size so people can pick it up and read it anywhere where they want a bit of entertainment. The formal cause will tell us about the form of it. You know, how it takes and loses its form. So what has this got to do with Aristotle's theory of causation? Well, if we can understand the difference between form and matter and the four causes, then we can explain Aristotle's theory on the prime mover, which actually started off Aquinas on his theory, uh, on his theory of the cosmological argument. So let's look at Aristotle's prime mover. Well, he at the end he said that if we're looking at the four causes, the prime mover is the final cause. He is the purpose of the universe. But how does this work? Well, firstly, the physical world is in motion around us. It's moving. Cars are moving. Um, the world is rotating. Everything around us is moving. He observed it. That was his inspiration. Therefore, the argument is a posteriori. He said, but all of these things need a cause. For a car to move, we need oil. For um, for us to move, we need energy from food. For a thing to grow, we need to put water. Everything goes back to a cause. And it can't just go on for infinity. It doesn't work like that, he said. And then he looked at an object. He said, for example, he said, look at a log. Okay, A log has a potential state and an actual state. The actual state is the log is here. This is our log. But the potential state uh, is that the log can be fire. So there's a difference, he said, between the potential actual state. But it, 
this world requires motion and something to move it so we need something to actually change from a log into flames into fire into heat we need something something has to exist to cause this and this he called the prime mover of god the god when we say god uh, god to our sort was different he was not dynamic, he was not personal like the Judeo Christian God. He was impersonal and inactive. And he didn't cause things like a domino effect, you know. It's not a domino, he didn't push one thing so the chain of motion happens. He said that everything is drawn towards this one prime mover, like it's a magnet and all the metals are true. That was his belief. This implies that us and all animals and all things around us have a desire for the prime mover. But is not everybody has a desire for the prime mover. How can you prove that? So is his argument actually correct is the question. And a point to remember is that the universe's efficient cause isn't the prime mover, isn't the agent that came, it's the purpose of it. The purpose of the universe is the prime mover. The prime mover is the final cause.